Welcome to part two of the multiplayer mixed reality tabletop template series. In part one, we explored the features of the MR multiplayer tabletop template, how it handles player seating, avatar syncing, voice chat, and game modes like slingshot and chess, all within a shared mixed reality environment. In this final video, we'll go through the setup of a scene using the tools provided to us in the template to create our very own multiplayer tabletop experience. So this is how we left it in part one. We had gone through the sample scene and we're going to be starting today by creating a brand new scene. We'll start with the empty template. We we'll go ahead and create. Next, we're going to add three core prefabs. I'm going to start with the XRI Network Game Manager prefab. So we'll do a search down here for the XRI Network Game Manager. We can drag and drop it into the hierarchy. The XRI Network Game Manager prefab handles the multiplayer setup, lobby connection and voice chat. The network object ensures it's synced across the network for all players, with ownership set to distribute and key options like transform sync and scene migration enabled. The XRI Network Game Manager sets the default player name, auto connects to the lobby and enables positional voice chat. We've also got a lobby manager, authentication manager and voice chat manager. Together, these components power the core of the multiplayer XR experience. Our next prefab is the Network Manager XR Multiplayer Prefab. So again, in the search, we'll go ahead and look for the Network Manager XR Multiplayer. There we have the prefab there. We'll go ahead and drag and drop that into the hierarchy as well. The Network Manager XR Multiplayer script runs the core network logic for our multiplayer XR experience. Below, we have the Unity Transport, which handles low level networking. This prefab is essential for managing server connections and data flow across players. And the third core prefab we're going to look at adding in is the MR Interaction Setup prefab. We'll go ahead and search for that. So we'll say MR Interaction Setup appeared here. We can then drag and drop it into our hierarchy. And this prefab is the foundation for XR and AR interaction. It includes everything needed for input and interaction. We have the Input Action Manager, the XR Interaction Manager, and the Event System for UI events. We've also got the XR Origin, which controls the player's position and head tracking, and the AR Session for enabling mixed reality on supported devices. This prefab gets your scene ready for interaction, whether you're in VR, AR, or both. We're next going to create an empty game object, and we're going to call this Table, and make sure it's at 0, 0, 0. Now, as a child of this new game object, we're going to go ahead and create another one, and we'll call this Network Tabletop Manager. We'll go ahead and click Add Component, and we'll add the Network Tabletop Manager. This is automatically going to add a network object and the Network Tabletop Manager script. It controls shared multiplayer interactions around a virtual table. It uses a network object to sync across players and the custom script manages network seats, the seat system and the tabletop itself. This is a key component for coordinating seating and interaction in the tabletop style MR experiences. In a moment, we'll be adding these components in to the required sections on the seat system and tabletop. Let's look at adding the actual table system. This is a prefab and it's called table system. So we'll go ahead and search for that. And here it is and we'll drag it into the hierarchy as a child of table. The table system is the core anchor for the multiplayer tabletop experience. It includes a tabletop surface, optional hover visuals for feedback and a table manipulation offset to adjust position and scale during placement. Together, these elements let players interact with a shared space in mixed reality, like placing, scaling, or rotating the virtual table in the environment. Going back to our network tabletop manager, we have to assign the seat system and the tabletop. Now we've added the table system prefab, all we need to do is to drag these into the respective slots. The seat system is located on the table system. Go ahead and drag that in. And the tabletop is assigned under the table system. We'll go ahead and drag that one in too. Our seat buttons we will sign later when we have a look at the UI. To continue the setup of the table system, we will extend the table manipulation offset and click on the pass through volume. We need to assign the left hand renderer and the right hand renderer of the hand visuals script. And these are located under the MR interaction setup, part of the XR origin XR rig. Camera offset, left hand, left hand interaction visual, and then the left hand. And we'll do the same for the right. Extend the right hand, right hand interaction visual, and drag the right hand into the right hand renderer. The next stage is to add the UI system. Let's look at creating the UI system. Let's create an empty game object and we'll call this UI. Again, making sure it's centered at zero, zero, zero. Under the UI, we'll create a canvas, going UI, canvas, and we'll set the render mode to world space. For the event camera, 
we'll extend the MR interaction setup, XR origin, and we'll set the main camera under the camera offset as the event camera. We'll set the position to zero, as well as the width and the height. We'll then click on add component, and we'll add the world canvas component. The world canvas handles floating name tags above each player's head, updating their position and showing who's speaking in real time. We'll add a child to this canvas, and we'll call this the player name tags. And back on our canvas, we can drag the player name tags into the player name tags parent. This object acts as a container for the player name tags. We'll go ahead and add another component and we'll look for the player list initializer. We'll go ahead and add that one. The player list initializer automatically finds and sets up player list UI components, making sure they're ready to display player info when the session starts. Next up, we'll add a prefab and we're going to need the local player UI area. We'll drag and drop this as a child of the canvas. Now see it starts to look more familiar, more like the sample scene. The local player area prefab handles player specific UI, things like ready buttons, player names and local prompts. It's only visible to the local user, keeping the interface clean and personalized. This prefab is key for managing player input and feedback during setup and gameplay in multiplayer MR scenes. If we go back to our canvas, we now need to allocate the player list UIs, of which there are two, so I'll go ahead and add two slots. To find them, we'll look in the local player UI area, go down to navigation menu, extend table panel, online panel, and under the table options panel host, we have a player list, we'll drag that as the top one in element zero. And under the table options panel client, we have another one, we'll drag and drop that player list into there. Alternatively, we can auto populate this player list UIs, if we have a large hierarchy and we're struggling to locate them, we can use the three dots little icon and click on find player list UIs. This is now going to auto populate the list for us. We click on one of these to go back and have a look at this player list. You can see it contains the player list UI script component. The player list UI manages the multiplayer playlist during a session. It updates the UI with connected players, shows their names and voice activity and handles joining and leaving in real time. Each player gets a custom slot complete with their color, name, and voice chat indicator that reacts to their mic input. It also highlights the local player with a U tag. This component is key for visualizing who's in the game and keeping the session feel live and interactive. To finish off the UI section, we'll go back to our canvas and add a component, and we want to add the Track Device Graphic Raycaster. The Track Device Graphic Raycaster lets XR controllers interact with UI elements in world space. It works with canvases, enabling laser pointer style input for menus and buttons in VR and AR. That completes the setup of our canvas. The next step involves connecting the network tabletop manager seat buttons elements to the UI seat button components. There's four seats, so we'll go ahead and add four sections. Then to allocate these, we'll go to our UI, local player, UI area, navigation menu, panel container, under, under current table panel, we have the seat UI where we have our four seat buttons. We can drag these into the elements in the seat buttons array. And we can collapse everything down. At this point would be a great time to test in play mode. We can go ahead and click play. And when you're in play mode, we're gonna be using the XR device simulator, which populates itself automatically. If you look under the don't destroy and load, we see we've got the XR device simulator appear here in the hierarchy, allowing us to look in our scene. And we've got the controls here for the XR device simulator, telling us what keys to press to get the corresponding controls. But we can use this to test out our functionality to make sure it's connecting to the lobby okay. So we can click on confirm. You can see here we've got our menu buttons. So we can just say host table and click on host. And then you see there we've connected, indicating to us that everything is functioning properly. Next, we'll go ahead and start having a look adding in our gameplay elements. Let's get started with adding the gameplay. Let's create an empty game object under the table and we'll call this game. As a child of this game object, we're going to add a prefab and it's called game mode manager. We'll drag and drop that inside game. The game mode manager controls which mini game or mode is active in the scene. It syncs the current mode across the network and shows or hides each one accordingly. It supports switching modes at runtime and handles rejoining scenarios by resetting state on spawn, making sure every player sees the correct game mode. 
We'll then go ahead and create another empty game object and we'll call this game mode empty. This is the empty state of the table when the user presses the empty button within the UI. On the game mode empty game objects, we'll go ahead and click add component and we'll go ahead and assign the game mode empty script. This is exactly the same one used within the sample scene. From here, we'll go ahead and create another game object. And this is going to be our experience. So we're going to call this game mode. And we're going to be making a model viewer. Game mode model viewer. Let's say, for example, we're working within a team and we want to share our artwork and 3D models that we're making for our game or product with our development team. Then we can all jump into this mixed reality experience and examine aspects of the product or model in more detail. We're going to be creating a script that sits on our game mode model viewer. So I'm going to go to my scripts folder under game modes. I'm going to create a new mono behavior script. And I'm going to call mine game mode model viewer. I can then assign this to my game mode model viewer in the hierarchy. And we can double click it to open up within Visual Studio. We'll add a namespace. This is going to be using MR TTT, Mixed Reality Tabletop Template finish off with a semicolon. We can now add an interface and the interface we'll be using is the I game mode. We need to implement the interface and the easiest way to do that is hover the cursor over the I game mode and press control and full stop and you'll get the implement interface that we can then hit enter. It then adds the hide game mode, on game mode end, on game mode start and show game mode. And then I'll go ahead and remove the start and the update methods. We need to issue the game mode model viewer an ID where you can create a variable to hold this ID and it will be private, but we can set it in the inspector by going serialize field. And we could say int m underscore game mode ID. We can set this as equal to one. And where we have the public int game mode ID, we can remove the throw new system not implemented exception. And we can say that that equals the m underscore game mode ID. We can also create another variable, which is going to be our 3D model that the team is going to be having a look at. So we can say serialized field is going to be of type game object, and I can, we can call this model to view. And we're going to leverage the hide game mode and show game mode. So when we want to show the game mode, we're going to be activating the content. So we can say model to view dot set active is going to be true. And when we want to hide the game mode, we can say model to view dot set active false. Very, very simple, just to give you an idea of how we can leverage some of the templates functionality to very easily create a shared MR experience and go ahead. I'm going to remove the not implemented exceptions under on game mode end and on game mode start. And I'm going to want to put my start method back in and make sure that when we start the experience, the model is hidden. So we can say hide game mode and save. And if we go back to the inspector under our game mode model viewer, you can see we've got our game mode ID and our model to view. I'm going to create a new empty object under my game mode model viewer, and I'm going to call this 3D model. And then inside, I can drag my game object, my artwork, into the 3D model game object. I have this 3D model of a vehicle, so I can drag the vehicle into the 3D model parent. It's a little big, so I can scale down accordingly. Under my game mode model viewer, I can then assign my 3D model to the empty slot and go ahead and deactivate it. Now we've got the 3D model in the scene. Let's take a look at adding some interaction to it to allow the user to pick the car up, rotate it and scale it. If we go ahead and select the 3D model, we're going to add some components to this. We're going to add in the XR Rab Interactable. By default, that's going to add in a rigid body. We don't want the car to, to fall to the ground. So we'll uncheck use gravity and we will check is kinematic. So it remains in place when we let go. The XR grabbable component lets users pick up, move and release objects using their VR controllers. It works with a rigid body and a collider and supports different grab styles, including one or two hands and movement types like velocity or kinematic tracking or instantaneous. Set up our XR grabber interactable. We'll change the select mode to multiple. We'll uncheck retain transform parent and select smooth scale. The next component we'll add to this object is the XR General Grab Transformer. So we've got add component and start typing XR General Grab Transformer. And the XR General Grab Transformer handles how an object moves when grabbed, it handles its position, rotation, and scaling. Under the scaling constraints, we'll go ahead and allow two handed scaling. 
Next, we'll go ahead and add our network object component, which is going to make this object part of the multiplayer network. It gives it a unique ID and ensures it can be synchronized across all clients. We're going to go ahead and we're just going to tick don't destroy with owner. We mean that the objects persist when the client who created them or currently has ownership of them leaves the room. Next, we'll add the client network transform script, which syncs an object's position, rotation, and scale across the network. And lastly, we'll add in the network physics interactable. And this lets players grab and move objects with realistic physics in multiplayer, syncing movement across the network with server or client authority. On this component, we're going to check allow override ownership. And allow override ownership allows users to take over interaction of an object that is currently being interacted with. In order to grab our objects, RxR Grab Interactable requires a collider. To do this, it's easy if we switch on the car, and then we can right click, go to 3D Objects, and we'll add a cube for this collider, and we'll position it around the car. Once we're happy with its size, we can go ahead and remove the mesh renderer and remove the mesh filter. So we're just left with the collider. Back on our 3D model parent, under our XR Grab Interactable, we can drag and drop our collider into the slot. Now you can leave this blank and when the games run it will automatically look for any child colliders. And then I can go ahead and turn my 3D model off again. And now our component is ready for our player to pick up within the MR world and rotate it and scale it. I then need to have a look at the game buttons and where we currently have the chess and the slingshot we can create one for our own game mode. So if we go to our UI and have a look in the navigation menu, panel container, game selection, games panel. These are our buttons for our games. Let's turn them on so we can see them in the scene view. They want to keep our empty table button, but we don't need the other three for a second. We're going to go ahead and turn those off. Let's just say we want our empty table and our own mode. So we can duplicate the first game button by pressing Ctrl D and then we can move it over. And then we can give this button a name. Instead of empty table, we can call this model viewer. And we can go ahead and change the icon. And we need to just hook up some of the functionality of the buttons. So when we click this, we need to tell the game mode manager that we've selected a game. So we drag the game mode manager into the slot, set game mode manager, and set game mode int. For our empty game mode, it will be zero. But for our model viewer, we give it the ID that we set which is one. And then we'll need to hook up our empty table with the game mode manager as well. So we select the button for the empty table, drag in the game mode manager, and set the game mode int to zero. So when the user presses this, it communicates with the game mode manager to say, select the game mode empty. And then when we use our model viewer, ask the game mode manager to set the game mode to one, which is then going to activate our model viewer, which has a game mode ID of one. Before we do a final build to the headset, let's do one last test within play mode to make sure everything's functioning correctly. I'm going to go ahead and click play. So here we are in play mode, again using the XI device simulator. I click on confirm. I'm going to say we want to host a table and then host. Once we're connected, we get the UI for our seats. So if we go to the game mode, you can see here we have our buttons that we've created. We have the empty table, which it currently is at the moment, and the model viewer. So if we click on the model viewer, we're setting our game mode to the one we've just created where we can have a look at our vehicle. Let's have a look at testing this within the headset, within the multiplayer environment. With your build complete, you're now ready to share your mixed reality experience with your teammates to gather feedback. Whether you're designing a car, visualizing architectural concepts, or simply playing games and hanging out with friends in MR. The multiplayer mixed reality tabletop template is a powerful starting point for developers, making it easy to build and share custom experiences. We can't wait to see what you create.